Hey everybody, hope you're doing pretty well. And so I'm gonna be doing a little video about Splinterfest today. Now one of the things I realized, I didn't take enough videos. If I sound a little weird, sorry, I'm gonna be drinking some water. My throat is a little tired, I think, from the weekend and all the talking I did. And thank you to everyone that took a lot of pictures because I was able to find some stuff to help share some of the stuff that went over there. I'm going to do a special video on the Coliseum of Chaos event because it was really special. And I want to really be able to talk about, you know, how it feels to play in a ghost card tournament. I talked to Rogue Patton. It was pretty amazing, everybody. So it deserves its own special video, I think. So let's go over some of the big reveals at Splinterfest. Some of the things that I thought were really cool. Some of the things that to me are a miss, but hey, could be really cool to you. And some of the other stuff that goes on that just went on and was worth talking about so i think the first thing we want to talk about let me find the right picture to share and there she is lux vega so lux vega got revealed on the first day about halfway through after a few of the other panels and stuff and the one main thing that i will say is probably a lot of people felt a little bit disappointed it looks like kelia plus a health I think they didn't realize they were doing that even, and Matt even when asked on Sunday said, oops, I didn't really look at it like I was making a Kelly a plus one health. But the big thing that you want to remember here, if you want to appreciate this card, is it is a special card from the original Splinter Fest, so it will have some added collector's value if this game continues. And the other thing is that his idea was to make another five cost card with three plus one stats, but this time instead of like he did an Archmage Arius, which was plus one to the different attacks, he wanted to make this card a little bit more on the defensive side. And he wanted to give you plus ones to each one of your defensive stats. One of the big differences and one of the special things he made me realize about this card is that it will help your entire team. Assuming it's not a reverse speed game, Every single one of your monsters will get an armor, every single one of your monsters will get faster, and every single one of your monsters will have one extra heal. And you can add all three of those buffs to any team in the game. One other thing I'll quickly talk about with this card that could make it special to own and rent out to players with smaller decks is that if you have Lux Vega, they said that they plan to have her always available to be used. There is a no neutrals monsters rule set, but they don't think that applies to summoners. So they do think she will always be usable. And that means that you can have a summoner that can let you play your max level monsters in any team all of the time. So what does that mean? If you're a player who's struggling to level up your summoners, but is looking at some of the cheap monster cards out there, you could go ahead and level up those monster cards and just play them with Lux Vega. This could make it easier for you to be competitive to move up into silver, up from silver into gold or from gold into diamond. But I think it'll be more appealing to people in silver who want to play in gold at the end of the season. Because you could take some of those cards out there and go, you know what? I don't really want to spend the money on Thaddeus or Oblivion right now to get them to level six, but I can rent a Lux Vega and I can go ahead and take my Cursed Wind Deco and get hit to level six. Or some of the other specific cards that you like to use and play with in the modern rule set. And that will allow you to also to say, hey, you know what? I've gotten my Death team to level six, I've got my Fire team to level six, but my Water team is only level five. But I could go ahead and use Lux Vega instead of Kelia, and look at that, I get an additional health. And now I can go ahead and push my rare and common cards to the next level of the meta of the game and have them competing better in the gold team. Or let's say I don't have any life summoners. Well, life, Lux Vega will fit really well with the life team. And so you don't even have to level one up. You just go ahead and start leveling up the monsters and cards and just always play them with Lux Vega. It's an interesting option for players out there as a way to kind of not have to buy summoners until summoners are as cheap as they want to buy them. Or if you've bought like a white team and leveled them up, but you keep losing because Sloan isn't any good. Well, now you can replace Sloan with Lux Vega. It's kind of an interesting play. And also it allows you to have a secondary summoner for every single team if the summoner that you do have is not good for a rule set like in a no malay monsters rule set you don't really want to be using tarsa but maybe you do want to play the fire team well now you can use lux vega so that that's the spiel on lux vega now let's get to the other thing that i think was the most important thing to mention and that's that they did give us some information on when land the land stuff was very very interesting and very intricate they, they showed us the overall big map they showed us the new 
marketplace that they're building that is part of the whole market 2.0 and we'll talk about that a little bit more when we talk about like the fact that they have a new battle menu system that they're going to be coming out with which is pretty cool we got another look here at the map and this time they went over to like the land sales page so this is going to be all very intricate you're going to be able to click down into all these places you you also can go to another view if you don't want to see the map and you can look at like things whether or not it's a hill in on the hills the badlands the forest the plains lakes or or occupied land we've heard about occupied land being where we might see some kind of introduction of boss fights or kind of like grouped up battles you can see here once you've clicked down on an area you're going to get kind of a topical view of of an area where a plot could be so each one of these squares would rec represent a plot and they represent a certain type of plot and then they also showed us that once you actually click on your plot you can see this one has a hill it is in the hills with a sawmill and it makes 20 to 20 000 wood a day so that's what this piece of land would make you can see if it was listed for a price you'd have the option to go ahead and buy it this is looking at it like kind of from a market point of view but you'd have a similar point of view oops i didn't want to show that one <laughs> I took one more picture on land and I wanted to show it, but I don't know where it is. So I think I will. Uh, we'll find it a little bit later and then we'll go over it. Sorry, guys. So the other thing that uh, the, the besides land that was kind of interesting was we did get a chance to see a lot of the different cards in Rebellion and this new card frame. So we'll go ahead and take a look at these really quickly. These are three very powerful looking monsters. As you can see, they are all epics. You got your gem, and except for this one's legendary. So your gem color is now moved up here. They've removed more of the border, and they've they, these are gold ones. Um, I do have a picture of them. Uh, like just here's the one with just regular art, and here's the one with the regular skins. So we'll kind of switch to another view. So now you see him a little better. But basically, they're talking about changing the artwork up so you can see more of the characters, less of the frame. I kind of like that because the character art has gotten so much better, so it makes a lot more sense. Also, you have this leveling bar now and then the abilities underneath them here. They've also got new kind of artwork for the different um, attacks. So that's kind of interesting. I, I think this would be... I don't know. It's a little weird. Like, is this a magic attack? I wouldn't think so. He's carrying a huge scythe. This one, it looks like it should be ranged. And so I guess this purple, like with a a blade of some kind, is now melee. And this kind of, uh, is he a magic archer? Or is, he, is that, that's a staff, right? At first it looks like a bow, but then it straightens out. So that's probably magic damage. We'd have to learn that really quick again. I, it, we'd pick it up pretty fast, but I think we'd understand it. They've moved the team thing over to here. So you can see this is an earth card, a fire card, and a death card instead of in the middle because they don't really, they want to kind of show off the art. And then they ha they've added these new things that haven't been really explained, but will be explained later on when Rebellion comes out. This was just kind of teased. The idea here is that this would be some kind of like, the, these would be additional buffs that these cards get if they're played with the right teammates of cards. So, you know, this guy's a Nomos. I'm guessing this says what he is and like maybe a tribe or a team. We don't really know, but it's like three different things to where like if you played three cards together and all of these things match, then they might get a bonus. So it's kind of the idea of playing like a deck that would be, you know, a certain type of monster from within this the system. We're guessing that they would have to roll this back and change the foils and frames on all the other cards and uh, give them these abilities too. Otherwise, the old cards couldn't very mesh with the new cards. But so Rebellion in itself could see a drastic change to the game, and it was pretty amazing to see. Also, they showed us quite a few Rebellion cards, so that was something that was pretty interesting. Oh, yeah, that's the Lux Vega picture that I got from someone else. Sorry, I'm going through these pictures a little bit, kind of kind of uh, guessing what, what's on them. I'm looking at Lux Vega a little bit too much, guys. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we had a good discussion about GLS soccer. Now, one of the things um, I've heard some criticisms, mostly just from, I watched Cryptomancer's video. He doesn't think the artwork on the card looks really great. I think it looks okay considering that the difference between ours and maybe some other soccer trading cards is that this is these are cards that are meant to be for the game. Now, one of the things that was very interesting about these NFTs is they do seem like they're going to be able to be leveled up. And so there's going to be the same kind of Birmingham mechanism that Splinterlands has. I do like the fact that they, ex when they explained how the gameplay would work, that there wouldn't always be that the best team would win, that there's going to be some functionality built into it that doesn't allow it, that doesn't make it so that the best team always wins. And that was pretty special. They did talk about the different stats on the cards and these different things here in the back that you can unlock by leveling them up. And overall, this made me feel like this game should be relatively fun. They show it here on a mobile phone, but they didn't really explain how mobile friendly this would be. Splinterlands actually does play pretty well on the mobile uh, phone, but you have to run it, in my opinion, out of the Hive keychain, and then it works really well. Otherwise, if you're trying to play it just on your mobile phone by going to the browser, it kind of depends on your mobile phone and if everything matches up really well. But I like the presentation on GLS and it made me more bullish to try to get into this. I am trying to do a group buy if people want to do it before the 17th. There'll be a link to my Discord. Come in and talk to us. There's not that many people interested right now so far. I don't know if we're going to get it done. And it isn't a very cheap one, even though it's a group buy situation. If you're not putting in $500, you're not going to get all the benefits. And we have to get to $10,000 to be able to pull it off. Let's go ahead and talk about, let's see. A few of the little like kind of caveats and cool things that they added in. There's going to be this kind of RPG game that they've come out with. This is kind of uh, alluding to like a Dungeons and Dragons type game. They also showed us some different miniatures that they were talking to buy. There was this talk that Neil had went to uh, Todd McFarland because they're big fans of his artwork. And they came up with this kind of crosswork art for maybe adding some of this stuff you know I don't remember everything about this I'm sorry guys but it was definitely something that was pretty cool I'm hoping that they're going to release the videos and decks from this that the, the company did but at this point they're not out there and then we can kind of go over them a little bit more in detail but I know they kind of wanted you to have to be there but then they distracted us with so much that was going on in the background because we were doing our tournament matches and everything it got a little bit out of control almost in my opinion um let me see do i have the other picture i was going to look at here this is more on the rebellion this is another rebellion character that they showed us so we, we have that one and i think i have one more that we can look at here the silver build fighter as you can see overall just kind of looking at the different ranges and things like that it, it was definitely a lot of fun to check this stuff out but you Let's see, was there anything else I wanted to show you guys? They had a physical card game they were coming out that was going to be kind of like Uno maybe, but I guess I didn't get a picture of that one, so I don't have it to share with you right now. Let's go ahead and close these out. We'll go over here, and we're going to do something kind of fun. So I have to change my camera. Let's see, we're at 13 minutes. Yeah, people will. Well, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to do a separate video for this. So that kind of just ends my little quick recap of Splinterfest, other than I'm going to talk for just a little bit of a moment. It was fun to meet the team. It was absolutely cool to see the new card and see some of the animations. That's definitely something that I didn't go over that well because I didn't have a picture of it. Unless, do I? Let me Let me just quickly check. I save it to the wrong place and not put it oh yeah here it is okay let's talk about this so the new battle screens for the game it was something that's definitely going to be something pretty interesting as you can see they've moved the filtering over to here which is going to allow you to have a filtering bar that can move up and down instead of on the top this is going to allow a lot more in detailed filters one of the other things that was kind of fun is that as you select each one of your cards and put them into your team they had an animation and you'd have to look on twitter there's some videos but like tarsa like basically shakes her hands and says a few different things 
things. The, this guy kind of like does a few different things and like has a little catchphrase. It's just stuff that kind of steps it up and to make it a little bit more fun, you know, to actually create your team within the game. And that's something that I thought was pretty cool. Also, they they just they, they added this thing here where like they say you're on a fatality focus and that means that you need to use the these combat rules and it, it makes it a little bit easier for you to pick cards that are within your focus and not forget what focus what abilities are in the focus. So I like that quite a bit. And so overall, I would say that the overall screen here looks a lot better. And then we also got a little look at the tower defense game so this was when it was live and playing and some monsters were coming through here the towers are attacking them the, it looks like they have some pathing off on this demo you would assume these guys would be coming through here not just kind of walking randomly through the map so double coconut was there they gave a nice presentation they said that this game definitely will be mobile playable and should be and it should be out relatively soon so hopefully they can clean up some of this mapping stuff that didn't do so right in the demo obviously they didn't play very well this hero should have been moved over here so she should be attacking these guys so not the best demo i've ever seen but still was relatively cool i think one of the other pictures i had i wanted to share with you guys here it is here Here's the card game. I knew I took a picture of it. I just forgot where it was. Sorry, this video is a little bit off, you know, not the best made, but <laughs> it's like a casual card game, two to four players. It's for all ages. They say they play it in the office and it is relatively fun. And it's just kind of a interesting little like quick game that you could play with friends at a party and then you could be like oh yeah these these this game is kind of based off of the splinterlands character cards that i play and then maybe it would help broach some ways for you to talk to people and get them into splinterlands the last little thing i will show you here from the land I had this picture that you can get to your plot details where you can see like your distance from this castle the current buildings that you have on your land what you're producing the closest processing points for so how long you have to go to move your land over and the nearby land types that you have that's just one of the things that you can see when you just break down a detail of your plot I know one of the things we're gonna have to decide here is the land and in the next little short video I'm going to do, I'm going to be sharing some of the loot. So thanks everybody for hanging out with me. Um, sorry I didn't have the most, you know, super breakdown of Splinterfest. For me, a lot of it was just meeting people, talking to people, watching the presentations, and then playing in the Coliseum of Chaos really just, it embraced like a lot of time there for me. And I'm going to do a special video explaining that. Thanks for hanging out with me today and hopefully you'll watch the other videos. Bye.